Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to our KubeCon virtual talk. This is the real Kubernetes artifacts. We have a special twist on a Kubernetes project lightning talk. My name is Paris. I'm Nikita, and we're from the Kubernetes Steering Committee. So you probably recognize this. This is the one of the most famous artifacts in the world. This is the Rosetta Stone. What did this teach us? Well, this definitely taught scholars how to crack Egyptian hieroglyphics, but it also taught us about their community uh, and it taught us so many other things uh, about history and when you can't be, be there yourself, uh, that's uh, exactly what you rely on, artifacts. So what would the people of the future, say 50 to 100 years, what would they think about us as a Kubernetes community if they were to look through some of our artifacts? Well, they're definitely going to think about YAML for sure. Uh, we have so many thousand YAML files strewn across 300 GitHub repos. We also have Docker files, pod manifest, deployment manifest, cron job manifests, storage, so like volumes. And all right, all right, all right, all right. That's enough of the technical artifacts. I'm talking a little bit more about our cultural artifacts. Like what makes us us? Everyone knows by now the Kubernetes logo story, the Kubernetes name story, the origination story, uh, Borg at Google, and Star Trek references for project code names and the whole nine yards. That's a real cultural artifact that has history uh, and roots in something. And the photo that you're seeing on the screen right now is actually a picture of the uh, Contributor Summit patch. This actually used to be on the uh, CNCF Swag Store website a long time ago for $1,000. Some of you may remember that. It's no longer on the store because we give these out at special contributor events now. So we have thousands of contributors all over the world that wear this patch as really a representation of them as Kubernetes contributors. That's great. So anytime you see this patch anywhere in the world, you know that you can give your local contributor a high five. Another thing I totally love about contributor summits are the t-shirts. So each contributor yes. summit has its own contributor summit t-shirt um, and they look really amazing. So Tim Hawken loves designing logos and designs for these. Uh, Josh Burkus has also contributed uh, for to the designs for Barcelona and the China events. And I really regret not joining the project earlier because <laughs> I missed having some of these shirts. I love them so, so much. Same, same. Um, Another thing I love about this community is also that it has a personality and we're not always about code and work all the time and meetings. So we have so many hobbies and all of these hobbies also feed into the stuff that we do in our community and that we do at KubeCons. So we hang out together at KubeCon, we go on bike rides, we go on parties, we do a lot of amazing, interesting games and lots of other things. <laughs> Shout out to Sig Bike, Sig Beard, Sig Honk. We could go on and on and on. Yeah, another thing we love doing at KubeCon is the Chopwood Carry Water Award. So there are so many members in the Kubernetes community who do thankless work day in and day out. Sometimes they're not even paid by their employers to do it. They're working on it on their own time, but they put in efforts day in and day out. Uh, so we like to reward these members using a chop wood carry water award on the big keynote stage. Uh, another way we also recognize uh, efforts is through the release swag. So each release team consists of almost like 50 or more volunteers right now. And uh, each release lead likes, uh, they design their own custom swag. And I personally love Aaron's Caternity's shirt a lot. Uh, I know it's one of like the many favorites that Kubernetes community has. Iconic. Um, and <laughs> it is iconic. 
I, w- I it was not on that release team and I wish I was just so that I, I could have bought that t-shirt. You, that's what I, you, the, the same thing you think about contributor summit shirts, I think about release shirts. So that's why I'm always trying to join the release team at this point. <laughs> yeah, and we're even doing that in 2020. So we're not missing a beat here and keeping in tradition with how 2020 is going. We have an Animal Crossing theme with positive, uh, logo for kubernetes with like cute kubernetes animal crossing figures um we're gonna have swag coming in real soon for that too wow so there is a lot of custom stuff here clearly we've got custom release gear we've got custom uh reward and recognition items and there's even more. Our community really gathers together around creativity and how we can deliver uh, the Kubernetes uh, name and message on different items. So in the past, you may have seen the Kubernetes logo on baby onesies, and we give those out to new parents. We even sell those on the, on the CNCF store at this point. Uh, we also have a massive sticker collection, just like so many other open source projects do. I mean, we even have donut artifacts at this point. And uh, donut artifacts, though, I don't know if they actually can, that they, they are technically artifacts at that point because they're in my tummy now. So I don't know, like, you know, if they're that real at this point. But we get really creative with food, too. So that's just not a long lasting artifact. So long lasting emojis. I don't know about you all, but emojis are really one of my favorite things about uh, the Kubernetes project. I've, given, I've even given a talk on it in the past. Emojis are just really a part of our life at this point. And Slack is such a huge, huge communication tool for us. And it's really one of the arteries of the project, both for users as well as contributors. We have hundreds and hundreds. Some of our folks even try to uh, come up with some of the best emojis and the most custom emojis. Uh, and that's really wonderful. And this is one of them. This is one of our favorites. Nikita and I picked this one out collectively. And, and this is one of our favorite emoji artifacts. And wouldn't it be funny if people from the future were like, so wait, did they have logos as eyes back then? In their eyes? In their, in their heart eyes? Such a dad joke, Paris. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know? <laughs> but these emojis also come with shout outs. We have a shout outs channel. And this is also really where a lot of people can find out about us as a community. Because one of the things we'd like to do, as Nikita mentioned before with Chop Wood and Carry Water, is we really like to give people recognition. So what's more powerful than recognition powered with emojis? I don't know about you, but that really is awesome. And that's my kind of thing. But Slack isn't necessarily publicly searchable. And yes, we know that. So what we've decided to do is make our shout outs publicly accessible. Why and how? We have a new Twitter account. This Twitter account this year is going to give us a voice uh, for just our contributors so that we can really hit some messages home with this large population of people that we have amongst a growing, gigantic user community. This will really allow us to funnel those, message, those messages and also really bubble up some of our shout outs and the people that we really care about and want to just tell the world how much they're all, how awesome they are and what a great thing that they just did. So like Paris mentioned, our community is huge. And this year we've crossed a very important milestone. We have 50,000 contributors to the Kubernetes project now. And all of these 50,000 contributors now have an identity. We have a special website just for Kubernetes contributors and how they can get started. And you can find all the future artifacts, our past artifacts, our pictures, our resources, our blog posts, our events, all at kids.dev. So we've heard a lot about in-person artifacts and physical and tangible artifacts, but one of Nikita and I's most favorite not tangible artifacts and really a cultural artifact is our value statements. 
Uh, these documents live in GitHub. They're, they come in the flavor, uh, they also come in the flavor of governance documents. All of these things are future artifacts. Other projects fork these and riff off them and communities of the future will learn from us through these, through these documents. Uh, and in the values document in particular, the one that we really wanted to hit home is inclusive is better than exclusive. No matter what day it is, no matter what time it is, no matter what year it is, inclusive is always going to be better than exclusive. And actually, let's oh, no. end on, yeah, hold up. We actually have some real, let's not end it right there. We have some really quick, real project updates. So we've had two interesting elections in the past few months. So we had a steering committee election and we also had the code of conduct committee election. So I just want to introduce the new steering committee members, Bob Killen, Jordan Liggett, and Savanam Srinivas. And thank you so, so much for Aaron and Lucky for all your hard work and all the efforts that you've put into making this project better. Thanks, y'all. Uh, we also have new Code of Conduct memory members joining us. So say hello to Celeste, Karen, and Fib, and thank them whenever you see them for all of the hard work they're putting in behind the scenes. And Carolyn, Trace, and Jennifer, thank you so, so much for all the efforts you've put in throughout the past years and shaping the Code of Conduct committee into what it is today. Thank you. Call and us. <laughs> say hi to us in the yeah. yeah, and say hi to us in the steering committee channel on Slack, and uh, we're friendly. And come find us. Thank you.